Now there are already a million and one Skyrim challenge videos out there on the internet, try to beat the game using only a fork or buckets, or to get through the whole thing without being hit as a baby. But that isn't this video. This video is about avoiding Skyrim's ultimate little pervert. Oh Jesus! I wanted to answer the question on everyone's mind. Oh god, he's coming! Can you beat Skyrim's survival mode without ever getting a letter from the courier? With this playthrough, I wanted to push the courier's workplace dedication to its absolute limit. Now the rules are simple. If the courier manages to get his letter to me, I lose. And I have to do it all in Skyrim's survival mode. Now I know what some of you are already thinking. Yeah, just shoot him in the face. And yeah, unsurprisingly, great idea. That works. But for the sake of this challenge, I'm not allowed to attack or fend off the courier in any Anyway, that means no fear spells, no explosions, no shouting at him, no nothing. This run started off as any other does. I spend an hour making a good face for my Argonian, immediately default back to a preset because mine looks like Ronald McLizzard, and I discard my build concept to make a stealth archer because survival mode is actually brutally hard. So I activated survival mode as soon as I was out of Helgen, and I immediately started to regret that decision as I heard the noise that I'll be hearing for the next 15 and a half hours. <coughs> This was a great idea and concept, but actually really stupid in retrospect. You see, in survival mode, when you get cold, you move slow. It starts just at 10% when you're a little chilly, and it gets way worse from there up until you die frozen and alone, just like in real life, you fucking loser. The courier's default movement speed is faster oh, than your own, and he's always running to get his letter to you. So if you're just walking normally, he'll catch you every time, which means you have to run. But you can't because you're frozen, and also you're dead. Now, if you're anything like me, you kind of have a vague idea of how the courier already works, but you don't really know the mechanics for sure, and that's great. Well, hey, it's a good thing you came here then, because after 15 or so hours straight of playing this run, I still have no idea how he works, and apparently not even the Wikipedia page really knows. Here's what I managed to figure out. There are 12 scenarios listed on the Wikipedia where the courier is triggered to deliver a message to you, but for the purposes of this video, there are only three that we really need to worry about. Number one, the courier will deliver a message to you the very first time that you use a dragon shout in any location whatsoever, which is mandatory in the main quest. Two, he'll try to tell you about the Hearthfire DLC the moment that you install it, and three, he'll bring you a letter from this Calcemo guy, Calcemo, I don't know, whenever you pick up enchanted weaponry. The courier will spawn randomly inside and around towns as you approach them and make a beeline straight for you. He doesn't seem to start spawning in the wilderness until you're a much higher level, and why that is I have no idea, but at level 20 he'll start trying to tell you about the Dawnstar Museum, which is when I assumed he would start appearing in the wilderness. But since I never hit level 20 in this run, well, you'll see. The moral of the story is, you think you know how he works until you try to avoid him for an entire run, and then he becomes the unholy aspect of Cthulhu itself. So, I make it out of Helgen, forgot entirely about the Standing Stone buffs, into Riverwood to steal all of Alvar's supplies for my trip, I take a bunch of fall damage and eat all of my food in the first five minutes because I also forgot you start with a healing spell, and we're up to Whiterun. I get my mission to head to Bleak Falls Barrows from Ferengar, and once back outside in Whiterun, the paranoia has really started to set in. I still don't know exactly when or where this kid is going to spawn on me, so I take the side roads to try to throw him off the scent. Into the wilds, and up to Bleak Falls Barrows, I start to run into my first non-courier related issues in this run. If you've never played Survivor, mode before, let me introduce you to the only armor set that you'll be wearing for the entire run, fur armor. So you better get some leather and start upgrading this bad boy because I couldn't find anything with even remotely as much warmth the entire time. After almost freezing to death within the first 30 minutes, we make it inside and warm up by the fire before moving on to retrieve the dragon claw and sniping the Draugr overlord as he gets stuck on a wall. The game hands me a necklace of sneaking and it's almost like it wants me to be a stealth archer at this point. Fine, I'll do it for you daddy. We take the river back down to Whiterun, fishing the way it was meant to be done in Skyrim, and make it back into the city. I'm really starting to get concerned that I broke something at this point, and the courier just isn't spawning at all. But I can't think about that just yet. I'm just eyeing that free raw beef in the marketplace. <sighs> back into Dragon's Reach to deliver the Dragon Stone, and we're off to slay a dragon. I contracted brown rot somewhere in Bleak Falls, so I go to cleanse it, and apparently you now have to pay 100 gold to get a blessing at the temple? What is this? Was this always a thing? I improve my furs to the highest they'll ever be improved for the entire run, and head to the Watchtower. The dragon wasn't difficult to bring down with the guard's help, and actually ironically helps warm you up as you bathe in that sweet, sweet dragon fire. Hey look, we're the dragonborn, and I make the first fatal mistake of the run. I shout. Okay, it's not a mistake, part of the main story, but now I know for certain, the courier is coming for me. The Greybeard's shout heralds the coming of the courier times, and I step back into Whiterun. This is actually going a lot smoother than I thought at this point, so I decided not to take Lydia with me out of some misguided sense that I was going to do this as a solo run. Mistake number two. Have you ever made the journey up the 7,000 fucking steps, fellow gamers? Well, enjoy making it 500 times throughout Survival Mode's main story, because you can't fast travel. So we're making the long trip to Iverstead and decide to take a rest before starting the hike up the mountain. Something has to be broken here. I haven't seen the courier even one single time at this point. It can't possibly be this easy. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. 
I spent more time paralyzed on this rock with fear than I'd like to admit, but eventually he disappeared and I started up the mountain, constantly checking behind me because now I have no idea where he's going to spawn and what's going on. Well, at least we know the game's not broken now. I make it up the mountain and a bunch of old men start spitting on the floor for me, which apparently is some kind of magical dragon power. But they do give me the tool that I will be using for the rest of this run, Whirlwind Sprint. And oh boy, what a tool it is. So I jump down the mountain and back towards Whiterun, skirting around anybody that even remotely looks like they could have a message for me. The courier's voice actor actually plays like 15 different characters in Skyrim, so I'm constantly jumping whenever I hear his voice collecting lines. collecting ingredients to bring to the gourmet. I took a shortcut through the farms and immediately see the courier spawn in front of me. I was terrified to try to outrun him, so again I spent about 10 minutes moving between the rock walls here, trying to learn his pattern before making a dead sprint for the city, and straight into a bunch of bandits that started attacking me for some reason. I tried to get the carriage driver to help me. I missed the part where that's my problem. I made one swing at the thugs, realized I couldn't do any damage, and made for the gates. But there he is again, that little pervert moonwalking his way down the road. Now I'm stuck between certain death in either direction, so I do the only thing that I know how to do. I run for it. The courier and the thugs chase me all the way up to Dragon's Reach, where I cower behind Lydia and shoot arrows from the corner. That will be a theme for this playthrough. After Lydia killed the thugs, I recruit her and head back outside where the courier is waiting once again. So I jump up onto some rocks and wait to see where he goes. Oh, he's got something for me, all right. My hands only. I sprint for the gates off the other side of the roof, bobbing and weaving through the rest of the town to try to avoid him, but he never actually catches up to me too much in the city. I jump onto the carriage and head to Morthal to get over to Ustengrav. After some meticulous testing, I did figure out that the courier can't go inside of inns and taverns, so I used those as frequently as I could to buy food and supplies and rest up to get rid of my tired status. The actual main quests are pretty safe as well, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on those. We get chased the wrong way out of town by the courier, get vomited on by a frost dragon in the woods, head back the right way into town, avoid the courier once more, and out to Ustengrav. Lydia slaughters everything while I shoot arrows into the wall, and turns out the horn is missing. So now we have to head back through the wilds to Riverwood to meet the thief, and I went back to Morthal because I stupidly assumed there would be a carriage there. I had to lead the courier on a chase around town a few times, trying to get him stuck on walls and things. And in retrospect, hiring Lydia was a terrible idea because now whenever I hear her footsteps coming up behind me, I almost have a heart attack. Eventually, I just decided to make a run for it and look for the carriage in town, but I underestimated how fast he was and how cold I was. So I did what anybody would do in this situation, and I chugged a bunch of drugs. But that ran out almost instantaneously. The courier was hot on my tail, and now I was starting to panic, desperately looking for something in my inventory to help me, slamming hot soup and wine into my face for more stamina. I was about to break my own rules, honestly, and fear the guy, but I managed to slip off the end of the dock and get away from him right at the end. Turns out there's no carriage in Morthal. So I make the long walk back to Riverwood, watch a dragon get turned into pudding by a giant in front of me, get turned around instantly by the Hellspawn courier appearing in front of me on the bridge, escape through the water, and make a run across the other side of the town for the inn. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Go! Oh! Once I'm inside, I locked everything behind me and grabbed all the wine that I possibly could from Delphine's bar. It's already saved me once, and I'm personally mature enough to not be ashamed of my alcoholism anymore. Now, Delphine decides to make me suck off a dragon to prove that I'm as good as the old men in High Hrothgar. I almost get jumped by a pedophile hiding out at this old mill. Holy shit! <gasps> and then back to Riverwood. I know how to avoid this guy here now, so I run for the inn and barely make it inside. Now she wants me to head to Solitude, and oh my god, I'm not walking all the way there, so I head to Whiterun to take the carriage. I barely make it inside the carriage at Whiterun with the courier's footsteps right behind me, and oh, that was close. For whatever reason, the courier didn't seem to spawn in Solitude, so it was relatively easy to stash my gear and hop on the party wagon to the Thalmor Embassy, where my game decided to crash as soon as I dared to touch the ambassador's sweet roll. I tried this about a hundred times and the same thing kept happening, so yes, admit Admittedly, I console command finished the Thalmor quest since I'm pretty sure the courier can't spawn there anyway and I'm not missing out on anything. I tried for hours to fix this crash, so yeah, this is vanilla Skyrim, baby. It just works. But the trade-off here is that because I had given all of my gear to the spy for the quest before the game broke, now all of my gear was gone, so now I'm back to square one. I bought what I could with my remaining gold from the Khajiit outside of Riften and headed inside. Now, I had a leg up on the courier in here because I had just spent about a week playing as Batman in this city, so I knew every little shortcut to avoid him. Into the Ratway, find Esburn, and escort him out of the city with the courier hot on our tail. After heading back to Riverwood to grab Delphine, I now had a posse of three, which meant that it would be even more terrifying trying to listen for the courier's footsteps in the dark. I learned of the Dragon Wren shout in the Elder Scroll, tried to blow a goat at the top of the mountain, and headed to Winterhold at Arngear's request to speak to the college, where I got into the 
worst situation in the entire run, trying to get into the college itself. You see, you have to either shout or cast a spell for Feralda at the entrance, which is easy enough on its own, but the problem is getting through her dialogue to the point where she allows you to do it in the first place. The courier spawns right at the bottom of the bridge, so while he's easy to avoid to get up the bridge, it's impossible to spam through her speech fast enough to avoid being caught by him the moment that you leave her dialogue. I tried getting him stuck on things, but eventually he just dematerializes and appears behind you at the bottom of the bridge once he realizes he's stuck. What a persistent little fuck. I eventually walked back across the whole world to speak with Esbern to see if he knew another way to get the Elder Scroll, but turns out, and let me know if you knew this already in the comments, both Arngear and Esbern both send you to the fucking college for the Elder Scroll, so fuck you if you thought there'd be more than one path to this. College of Winter. After spending about two hours running across the world and freezing to death a thousand more times, I finally was going to give up and say this wasn't possible, and then the courier just didn't spawn. Yep. He just stopped spawning. Nothing here. Not a cent. So I sped through her dialogue as fast as I could. What? She made me touch her with oh, my healing hands where the other nice. apprentices couldn't see us, and she let me inside. Now I had another problem. It's always freezing cold in Winterhold, and being outside on the bridge for any length of time very rapidly brings you to freezing. And then I had to go up north to Septimus Sigmus to start the Elder Scroll chain. So I first tried to leave the town by the bridge to go around the huge cliff face, but the courier actually, I kid you not, intentionally trapped me on top of a rock and watched me freeze to death in front of him. What kind of sick, evil son of a bitch? So I eventually decided to jump off the bridge and avoid all of that running, landing very neatly first try into the water below, and made the trip across the ice. Getting there wasn't too bad, but getting back was. This was just survival mode in Skyrim being an absolute pain in my ass, and because I had spent so much time and money on preparing to avoid the courier in the first place, my health and survival supplies were dangerously low nearly all of the time. After dying about a hundred more times, I made it out and headed back to warm up at the college, where I showed the students how to do magic tricks when your fingers have been replaced by icicles. It's no after that, I headed back out and over to the Dwarven Ruins, which was an absolutely welcome relief. I would take a thousand Falmer over my stalker at this point, and finally I had the Elder Scroll in hand. Now out of Blackreach, down the mountain, I think I'm around level 10 now, avoid the courier that is now randomly spawning in the wilderness, sleep off the Frostbite in Whiterun, and back to Iverstead to head up the mountain to enter the Time Rift. The Alduin fight was stupid hard because my skills were anemic, but I decided to atone for my toxic masculinity here, and I gave Lydia a chance to shine and beat him. Extra crispy. Then the Greybeard sent me on another trip across the entire world to both Solitude and Windhelm because Arngear wants to see me work on my calves to convince the Imperials and Stormcloaks for peace. I almost got caught by the courier in Solitude when he spawned five feet behind me, and then again in Windhelm when he cornered me at the keep, but eventually managed to make it, freezing and half dead, back to the Peace Council, and finally to Dragon's Reach to spring our trap. Now, you've seen the memes, you know the story, but if you somehow don't, yes, the courier absolutely can spawn during your fight with the dragon in Dragon's Reach, and I thought this was for sure gonna be the end of the run, because you have to stand on the little outside balcony part to summon the dragon, and the courier spawns right at the start. If there weren't any friendly NPCs here, it probably would have been the end, but my strategy here was to call the dragon, immediately cast the dragon wren shout to get him to land, and then spend the next 10 minutes sprinting around the room while the NPCs took care of the fight. Once the dragon was captured, I jumped down on top of him so the courier couldn't reach me, and then sprinted back up to let the dragon free of the trap. I got the dragon to walk outside, and after one more loop to get the courier stuck upstairs, I got on the dragon and... FREEDOM! Well, almost. The courier was so close during the animation that I could still hear his pervy dialogue as I flew off into the distance. But after making sure I didn't get a letter in my inventory, yeah, you gotta be quicker than than that baby. I was so paralyzed and weak from the cold and the journey that I sprinted past as much of Skuldafen that I possibly could. I had about 10 arrows left to my name at this point, and I had to pick up every single one that I used just to keep moving through. Through the bitter cold, up to the Dragon Priest, activated the staff as fast as I could, and dove headfirst into the most welcome sight I'd laid eyes on in this run. Sovngarde. No cold, no hunger, and no sleep necessary in here, thank god. And after showing the guy out front the skills we've acquired throughout this run, He lets us into the meat hall, and we can finally start the fight with Alduin. Now, the fight itself was kind of a meme, as I just ran around healing myself and clearing the skies while the real heroes did all the work for me, just like Liddy and the rest of the run. So, we sneak in the last shot to bring him down, suck his power into our own little skinny skeleton frame, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I finally beat Skyrim in survival mode without ever getting a letter. I've been looking for what you. What the fuck? <laughs>